This is Sam Podide coming to you from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Central Parish, Abuja. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the Psalms you give to us daily. Thank you for the love you have for us. Thank you, Father, for answers to our prayers, the knowledge we gain from the Psalms. We pray that, Lord, we will remain faithful even to the, glorious, to the glory of your name and the prosperity of our soul. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. The psalm for today is Psalm 129, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 129, verses 1 and 2, which goes thus, Many a time have they afflicted from my youth, May Israel now say, many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. I pray for somebody, no matter how many people have come to afflict you, no matter the level of affliction, the Lord will not allow them to prevail against you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the rod of the wicked shall not rest on the lot of the righteous. So you must seek and endeavor to be among the righteous. And that will separate you as the Lord separated the children of Israel in Goshen. When the angel of destruction, when the plagues were raging in Egypt, the children of Israel were as tears. I want to pray again. That as the Bible says, when the wicked one comes like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up the standard again. I pray that the Spirit of God will always lift up the standard against the wicked in whatever manner they may come against us in Jesus' name. I feel a little bit pleased when I look at this. I feel happy realizing that no matter what, the Bible says, even if they come against us in one way, they will flee from us in seven ways. I want to thank God again for his mercy that endures forever. We are not consumed because the mercy of God that endures. According to Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 here, says it, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Imagine somebody that has been afflicted right from his youth, yet the enemy never prevailed. I want somebody to say praise the Lord out there. David experienced a lot of affliction all his life. Just as many of us in our own families, among brethren in the church, in the working places, in the school, maybe you are brilliant and there is someone who does not know much and the teacher always comes, oh, the first person in the class is so, 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 and that. It is not your fault that they are not getting the high marks Yet, they are envious of you. You are in a place, you are working hard, and things are working out for you. The Lord is rewarding your efforts. And here is somebody who goes around sleeping around, lazing around. Remember the Bible says the lazy man shall not eat. When it is time to eat, you have enough to eat. But the lazy man has nothing. Yet, he grumbles when the Lord blesses you. He rewards your labor. The one who is not working feels, why shouldn't I be blessed like that man? Yet you have sown and you are reaping. He doesn't think about while you sowed, you were, you, 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 you were you, I mean, uh, weeding your, your, your farm, watering it, adding pesticides, adding all sorts of chemical fertilizer to make it grow well. Is there slumbering? Yet when the time of harvest comes, 
you are reaping, he's angry. I pray for you. As many as are envious of you out there, the Lord will continue to prosper you and give you victory over them, protecting them against every of their evil afflictions, every of their evil thoughts against you. In the name of Jesus. David faced a lot of affliction. Just imagine even from his own father's house. It was time for people to be blessed. It was time for anointing to come. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. Prophet Samuel was there. The Lord said they had left Saul. I have chosen for me a king from the house of Jesse. Imagine when the prophet got there. Uncle William came out tall, thinking it was like uh, Saul, the man who is taller than everybody in Israel from his uh, shoulders up, looking handsome and strong. <laughs> the Lord said, a lie. Shammah came, and the rest of them up to the seven. Yet, they wanted to steal the blessing of David. And Samuel had to ask their father, Jesse, don't you still have any child? Oh, there's this small one is in the bush taking care of the sheep. Can you imagine? Senior brother sitting at home. And the junior one is the one that is in the farm tending sheep. Maybe if you look at Psalm 51, it says, Out of sin did my mother conceive me. Some Bible scholars believe he was conceived out of wedlock or whatever. But he's still a child in the house. Praise God that God does not look as man looks. God walks with our heart. Say, please get this young man for me. We will not spend the whole day waiting for him. And until David came, the prophet did not come, did not leave. As soon as he came, the Holy Spirit told him, rise up and anoint him. Here he comes. I pray for you. No matter where your gains are, no matter where the enemy attempts to hide you, the mercy of God will seek you out to receive your blessing in the name of Jesus. Nothing, no one will deprive you that which is due you according to the mercy and blessings of the Most High God in the name of Jesus. Imagine David with the wife, Michael. She was sent to him as an adversary. Yet, she lost out. Your own wife being sent to you as an adversary. Imagine when David was running away from Saul and Shimei, who would have helped him? Say, what do I have to do with this bag vagabond, this son of Jesse, these ones that run away from their masters and started to rain insults on him? But, uh, but yet, God did not give him any opportunity to prevail against David. David went away. When it was time to come and deal with him, oh, he decided that was his captain. Oh, let me finish this one. Mm -mm. David said, don't worry. He was not vengeful. How about in the bush? Animals against him. Lion came. Bear came. The Lord did not allow them to prevail. I pray for somebody, regardless of how many, your enemies may be. Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them from them all. I pray for you, regardless of how many the afflictions, the afflictors may be, the Lord will deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 121 says, The Lord that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. From verse 3, they say, You will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy righteousness. And so the sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. You look through Psalm 91 too. They are there. Say they may come against you one way. From you, they will flee in seven ways. You know? So the Lord in his faithfulness saw David through all the afflictions he went through right from when he was a child. In his father's house, he was largely hated even by members of his own family. Like many of us, 
You know, sometimes when you look at how the Lord has brought you to where you are today, and you start to hear stories of some evil fellows around, you start to hear stories of what people have gone through, people around you, how they were afflicted, many who even died, your classmates in school. You hear, oh, maybe enemies in the house have dealt to them. Some became blind. Some became crippled. But in spite of that, the Lord saw you through. You were in the village in the night. Oh, they say there's one woman who is a witch, who is this, who is that. But the Lord kept you. I pray that that Lord that has, that has kept you all through that youth will remain faithful, even in your old age, so much so that you will fulfill your days right here on earth in the name of Jesus. And as the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. It is also written, if Christ be for us, who can be against us? And that is why I will admonish everyone, Christ must not be against you. You must do everything to be sure and, and enable Christ to be for you. Like the common saying, one with God is majority. If God is there for you, let the whole world be against you. You will still overcome. And if you look through Psalm 91, so many lines of promises from the Lord God Almighty to the one who says, the Lord, say he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. I pray as you put your trust in the Lord, the Lord will protect you, shield you from the wiles of the wicked, keep you under his tabernacle, and no evil will befall you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.